Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Puppet Masters. This is a two or four player 2v2 head to head game where you're going to be controlling one of many puppet masters. These guys here are what are going to allow you to control the puppets on the arena. You'll gather these guys and utilize them for your own purposes to fight against other puppet masters. Each puppet master is going to have their own health and abilities and they're going to use these and their puppets to defeat their opponents. If you can get your opponent's HP to zero before they get yours to zero, you win. Will you be the ultimate puppet master find out in the game here we talk about how to set the game up how to play and of course my review to begin a game of puppet masters the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have each player select a puppet master and there is a large amount of different masters to choose from and there are some easier ones and some more difficult ones each of them are going to have their own hp their own number of strings they're going to start with and of course initiative which is whether they go first or not and finally an ability you're going to have the ability to place free strings and uh broken or spent strings on each of these different portions here and then it has, of course, the art of the Puppet Master. Once you each have one of those guys, you're going to get the health tokens and place the amount of health you have on your Puppet Master on the card or the player board, as well as any of the strings you're going to get. So, for instance, my Huntress is going to start with five strings. I'll place them all on the free strings area. After I've done that, I'll get a player reference card. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and get my item and spell card decks, shuffle them, and place them face down within reach of all players and every single type of token. Then, each player in turn order, or initiative order, or however you want to do it, is going to select one deck of these different puppets. There are different types of puppets. You're going to have uh, forest-type puppets or water-type puppets. There's going to be necromancer-type puppets and Cthulian mythos-type puppets. And they're basically just different decks of different styles of play. I'll select a deck. My opponent will select one. I'll select one. And then my opponent will select one. We'll take all those four decks, and we'll create one deck with it, and we'll shuffle it up and play place it face down in the middle of the arena and then deal out two plus number of players cards face up in the arena. After that, all you have to do is make sure you separate your areas. You have your puppet master and then you're going to have your line. You'll have the arena, your opponent's line, and then their puppet master. And then you're ready to play. Puppet Masters plays similar to other TCG card games. I usually always try to relate them in some way to Magic because a lot of games have that same similar flow. There's going to be phases in the game. Each phase is going to have players taking turn by turn aspects for each of the phases, and then you'll move on after both players have passed. You're going to do the recovery phase first. This is going to basically have anything that happens with the recovery effects take place with your different puppets. You're you're also going to receive a gold, and if you have a broken string, you're going to put it back on to the free string area. Then, after you've done that and your opponents have done that, you'll move on to the maintenance phase. In the maintenance phase, you're basically going to be dumping out puppets onto the arena, which is two plus the number of players. So it doesn't matter how many puppets are already currently there, and in fact, if there are more than ten puppets, each of you will start taking damage. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep this pool area under ten cards, unless you don't mind just suffering a little bit of damage. Uh, you're also going to be able to pay, or you must, pay maintenance costs for your puppets. So there's an initial cost which you'll pay during a specific phase, which is the possession phase, but during every maintenance phase there's going to be a follow-up cost. So for instance with this character here, to possess it would be two, and then to follow up for a maintenance of return it's going to cost you a string and an HP from the puppet master that has this unit summoned. And usually, most of the time, maintenance fees are cheaper than of course purchasing them. After you've paid all your maintenance fees, you're going to be able to do aspects of play, uh, actions. Uh, based on initiative order, whoever has the better initiative is going to go first and then follow it up with the next player. And you can do any of these actions. You can buy items or spells. Basically, you'll spend a gold, draw three of these guys here, and then with the rest of your gold, remaining gold, you can purchase these. And the cost is in the top right. Most of the items are going to be cards that you'll be putting down, either face down or face up on your units or units in the arena. And most of the spells are either played as an action or as an instant based on whenever somebody does something. It's like a reaction to somebody else's thing. Oh, you're attacking me? I'm going to play my reaction spell that lets me do two damage to a unit that is attacking me. So you can purchase those, and you can do that as an action. And after you've done that, your opponent will get a turn, and they can do things like casting a spell or they can equip items, or they can sacrifice puppets. And if sacrificing puppets are going to give you a certain amount of strings back, you'll lose a certain number of strings. It's a way of kind of continuing to be able to use the strings if you do not like the puppets that you currently have. There's also effects in the game that will make you sacrifice puppets. And uh, the last thing is you can detach items from puppets and discard them. So if you don't like an item that you have on a puppet that's yours, or uh, something that you've played on an arena, you can discard that. 
If you've played an action, it'll pass to your opponent, then you'll go back and forth until you pass, and then finally your opponent passes when both of you pass at the same time, it will end. But if one player keeps wanting to continue play, they can. They can take, keep taking actions while the other person passes until both players pass. The next step is possession, and possession is pretty straightforward. Basically, there's going to be a cost associated with each of the puppets here, and the cost is going to be based off of these strings. There's a possession cost, and it says in the middle of the card. This here, guy here costs two strings. This guy over here, one string and you'll pay that cost to possess the unit you'll stick take one of your strings that are not broken one of your free strings place it on the unit and you gain control of it and then there's gonna be less puppets in the arena and you'll be able to use that puppet for the remainder of the time that is in your line and this is your line this is the area in which you're gonna have puppets to defend against your opponent's puppets each of your puppets are gonna have unique things with them so for instance the number of times in which they can take actions plus a bonus time they can take an extra action if they spend HP from the Puppet Master. They're going to have their gold value, their health value, their armor, and their attack damage. And for most games, you know what armor and how attacking works is very similar in this game as well. It's going to be damage minus armor equals HP loss. And so that is how you're going to be getting these guys, and they're going to be able to go back and forth purchasing units. Another interesting thing about this game, though, that's not usual for TCGs, is if I wanted to purchase this unit and it's going to cost me a possession cost of one, my opponent would have an action or an option to spend an additional one string to then control that instead. And then I would have an opportunity to spend an additional string. So you can have a bidding process, and the person who spends the most uh, and the other person passes, that person can gain control of it thusly placing the strings that they had spent on it, and of course, having the puppet for themselves. And then the next player will get a chance to uh, purchase a puppet. And that's basically how the possession aspect works. You'll be bidding on puppets going back and forth until you no longer want to bid on puppets. After that, the possession phase is over, and it's the main phase of the game, which is the action phase. During this phase of the game, you're gonna have a number of things you can do. You can attack a puppet in the arena with a puppet that you have on your line. You can attack an enemy puppet master, so the specific person that is controlling the puppets, or you can attack a puppet that the enemy controls. You can also cast spells and use puppet abilities that say that they have an action. So when you attack, you can say, I'm gonna use my forgotten puppet to attack this vampiric underling. Whenever you do damage to a puppet, your damage is going to go through and theirs will not. So the defender does not actually do damage to the attacker. It's only one way. And if the puppet's HP goes to zero, you're going to gain benefits like gold. Usually, for instance, you'll gain all the gold from puppets that are in the arena. However, you're only going to gain half gold for the puppets in your opponent's line that you defeat. If you attack the Puppet Master directly, the Puppet Master will have the opportunity to attempt to defend with one of their puppets on their line. And they can go ahead and go, I'm going to block with my bulwark so that you're forgotten, can't do damage to my Gladiator or Ares. And in which case, they would potentially lose that puppet or take damage. There are a multitude of different types of tokens in the game. Usually it's going to be pretty simple. Gold for the puppets that you defeat. Uh, you're going to have these guys here, which is scrap. Some of these guys are gonna be used more than others based on the puppet master that you control. The strings, these are the things that you can use to purchase or possess puppets in the game. And then of course, HP, which is gonna be used on your units as well as on your puppet master himself or herself. And once that reaches zero on either your puppet master or your puppets, they will be defeated. And of course, if you go to zero, the game is over. And you'll basically be going back and forth on the combat phase, utilizing actions just like you normally would on any other phase that has actions until both players pass. When that happens, you're going to go ahead and restart the round, go back to the recovery phase, gain a gold, return a broken string, because strings will break when puppets die. So if I had three strings on this guy here, you defeated my guy, you're gonna gain half the gold, this guy is going to go to the discard, I'm going to gain rounded, half rounded down. So I would get one broken string and two would come back to me with three. If it was four, it'd be two and two. And then on my recovery phase, I would gain one string back. And that's basically the idea of the game. You're going to be going back and forth, gathering puppets, gathering items and actions, spending them to attack and hopefully defeat your opponent's puppet master, or maybe have to get through his line of defense. You might be utilizing one really big monster or a multitude of different type of monsters that are all puppets. Um, and of course, you might just be spending your time trying to defeat all of 
of the puppets in the arena so that you can then gather items and spells to kind of equip and make your characters better and defeat your opponent that way. There's a ton of different characters and a ton of different variety and a ton of different ways in which you can win the game, but one main way to do it, defeat your opponent's puppet master. Okay, let's talk about my review. Now you might not notice my voice is a little different. That's because I've been talking for the last two days I was at a convention. So if I sound different than my other reviews, that's because I've lost half of my voice. Pardon, that's just how it is right now. But let's talk about the game Puppet Masters. So this is a 1v1 or 2v2 game. There's a team mode and the team mode's pretty specific how it shows, how it's stated in the rule book. I think it's like only like a couple paragraphs long and it's pretty straightforward. But we're gonna talk about the 1v1 nature of the game. Basically, choosing your puppet master is one of the most important things you're going to do in the game because that is going to dictate your type of playstyle. Maybe uh, Cecilia the Swift, she has a special ability. She cannot become tangled in the possession phase. She can take item cards off of dying puppets on her line and return them to her hand. Uh, this one here is Dark Wraith Fella. Now this is going to say damage inflicted by Nightkin among their own line heals Fella for damage dealt. So you're obviously going to want to select certain types of puppets based on the type of puppet master that you choose. If you don't have the right puppet master with the right types of uh, puppets that are in play, your puppet master could do very little in the game. And so because you only get to choose two, make sure that the two combo in some way with each other, or make sure you choose a puppet master that doesn't involve that. Cyclop units cannot, uh, units cost one less string to maintain for Dengra. So obviously you want a Cyclops type puppet uh, or a deck, the puppet deck for, for this guy here, because it's gonna be a lot cheaper in order for you to utilize them as opposed to the other players. And they go on and on. Some of them are going to have more HP. Some of them have more strings that you can use. Some of them will involve you breaking strings easier. Some of them have very little HP, but they can heal. Some of them are going to involve different types of decks that you have to choose or should choose in order to play with them. But regardless, there is a lot of choice. There's like over 20 of these guys here. And uh, I did not go through all of them. There's a lot. Uh, but the ones I did go through were really fun. I really enjoyed them. Um, well, this one says, if this specific character kills a puppet committed to a player's line, grant the puppet's entire gold for her bounty. So like in general, most of the time when you defeat your opponent's line puppet, you'll get half the gold. But in this case here, you're going to get all of it. So she's really cool. She's got 17 health, which is pretty solid, pretty standard, and five strings, which is also the standard. So this is a good way to mitigate or forego having to fight a lot more in the arena, and you can actually deal with your opponent's puppets to get that gold that you need for the items that you want. Or this one, the Gladiator, plus three to all puppet attacks against targets in the arena. This character focuses on killing puppets in the arena, getting their gold value, making sure that your opponents cannot gain the puppets that they want from the arena by making sure they aren't there in the first place. And I really enjoy the Puppet Master abilities and how they function, allowing me to kind of choose my own playstyle even before the game gets started, before even picking decks or anything. And then, of course, picking the decks. There is a large amount. I think there's like 18 different types of cards that you can uh, kind of combine together, which makes not infinite possibilities, but quite a lot to where I don't even want to mathematically calculate them. And they work together in certain ways. Sometimes they work with Puppet Masters and together. I selected ones that kind of are like brute force sacrificers and cards that kind of mess with your opponents when they're on the field. Things like uh, the Cthulian type cards where you actually do not control them. Instead, you'll actually send them over to the player with the most health and they kind of like leech life off of the other players. And then Alicia picked the blue ones and they were like the knights. They were the ones that were like a little stronger. They had a little bit more oomph to them, a little bit more attack. And yeah, I'll, I don't have a whole huge amount to say about these guys. There's just a lot of... Uh, combos, there's a lot of different interactions you can have with them, and they all work really well together. They're all a lot of fun to combine and kind of customize so that every game is going to be different. Your items. Items are very powerful, and you can put as many items on a character as you want, but if that character dies, you'll lose them all. Now, there's spells that are going to be useful too. They're kind of like uh, cards that counter other cards. They're cards that buff your cards or heal yourself. There's things that you can use with these spells, and they have a range. Each of these ranges from like three gold to like 11. So you can get a whole hand of cheap ones and be able to purchase them all. We can get a whole hand of large ones and you might only get one. But generally speaking, you're always gonna be able to buy throughout the game. You're never gonna feel like you can't do anything on your turns, that you're kind of forced into nothing. There's always at least something you can do on your turn to kind of mitigate or help you or defeat your enemy in some way, which is really cool. The phases of the game are very straightforward, right? You're gonna go through basically cleaning up, getting your broken strings back, gaining the gold, and then any special abilities that they have here. 
then you go go through the maintenance phase we have to pay the maintenance cost of your creatures and do certain actions that can only be played in this phase move on to buying cards or purchasing them that are all in the deck that are all available for everybody so if you didn't get it it's kind of your fault <laughs> and then the action phase which is basically the attacking aspect of the game going back and forth attacking 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 until basically you have nothing left to attack with or don't want to attack anymore because you don't want to exhaust your guys to the point where you start taking HP, which is always an option if you want to do that or not. Yeah, this is a really solid game. It's a lot of fun. There are certain little aspects to it that I would like to see a little bit different. I mean, I like the idea of the strings. I wish there was more. I wish I could even have a bigger lineup than this. Um, there's some times where you have one really big guy in the field and that was purchased by somebody else and then you're stuck with there's maybe just a bunch of little guys. So there's a bit of chance in the game where like, oh no, they have the ability to go first, they have the big dude, and I'm going to be constantly clobbered losing my creatures and they're going to start bulking up. So there's a possibility that you can landslide in this game depending on how it goes. Now of the games I've played, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen on the occasion. And when it happens, you're like, ah, I don't know if I have to, I go back to my spells, do I keep buying monsters? They're going to keep dying. Dying, and it becomes one of those things where uh, a win more happens and you, there's there's no stopping it which is part of a lot of card games a lot of TCG games if you played TCG games before uh, this one is uh, not like that this is more of an LCG more of like a card game which everything is included you don't need to buy anything else to play this game and you can kind of mix and match for forever and this is the game it's all right here but it has that same luck factor in what is drawn when you can play other things too is initiative. The fact that you're going to be able to have the gladiator go first every turn compared to this guy here. And so they're going to be able to attack first every single turn. Um, I like to see maybe that there would be some type of change in that way. So that way uh, I'm not waiting to get my guys removed because they each creature has so many actions. Um, but yeah, those are my little gripes about the game. The artwork's really cool. If you like the style of artwork, um, it's shown on a lot of the cards. It would be even cooler to see them in full art in some way, maybe even like a customized deluxe version of the game where I saw all the art on these guys in larger form as opposed to the small art because it's really done very well. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I enjoyed this game. I think most people who enjoy card games are going to like this one as well. And if you don't have a lot of games like this one here, this is definitely one to check out. There are a lot of unique nuances to the game that involve the strings and how the arena works and how all the cards in the deck are basically chosen between both players and how you're going to be able to buy items and attach them, have secret items that kind of curse other creatures in play or have unique little trickery effects. Uh, this is going to be something up your alley. I, I really enjoyed Puppet Masters and I think you you guys will too. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Puppet Masters. If you're interested in picking this game up, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every Wednesday and Sunday, we stream live playing games just like this one and video games as well uh, that are kind of all based around the tabletop board gaming community type thing. And if you would like, you can uh, join us there and check the games out. It's kind of an easy way to see if it's something that's for you as opposed to me just saying, it, you might see how it's played and go, oh, this is how it's played. Oh, I like the interaction they're having. I think my group would enjoy this as well. That's a really cool way to check that kind of stuff out. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to controlling your strings next time.